spherical coordinate system. X, Y and Z axis are taken as a reference even to describe points in this coordinate system. X, Y and Z are mutually perpendicular to each other. A point in spherical coordinate system is represented as P R1 theta 1 phi 1. This point is also the intersection of three orthogonal surfaces. The three orthogonal surfaces are the first one R is equal to constant surface, theta is equal to constant surface and phi is equal to constant plane. R is equal to constant. It is a sphere of radius R1 centered at the origin. Centered at origin. That is R is equal to constant surface. R is equal to constant. R is equal to R1 theta is equal to constant is a right circular cone a right circular cone with its apex at the origin with its apex at the origin and makes an angle makes an angle theta 1 with z axis angle theta 1 with z axis this is theta is equal to constant surface and finally phi is equal to constant plane as we already know about this plane because we have seen this in spherical quad system as well it's a half plane perpendicular to x y plane and makes an angle phi 1 with x z plane. This is phi is equal to constant plane. So all these planes intersect at a point, all these three surfaces intersect at a point and that will be the point P R 1 theta 1 phi 1. So to summarize coordinate systems, a point in any of these three coordinate systems whether it is Cartesian or cylindrical or spherical is a result of intersection of three orthogonal surfaces. For the case of Cartesian coordinate system, a three orthogonal surface are three planes. For cylindrical coordinate system, there are, there are two surfaces on one plane and for spherical coordinate system there are two surfaces and one plane okay we have understood how to represent a point in three coordinate systems that is cartesian cylindrical and spherical how do we represent a vector in these three quad in these three coordinate systems a vector a bar is represented as ax ax plus ay ay plus az az we have already seen many examples of of cartesian vectors and the same vector a bar in cartesian co in cylindrical coordinate system is represented as AR AR plus A phi A phi plus A z A z. In spherical coordinate system, this vector A bar is represented as AR AR plus A theta A theta plus A phi A phi. So I would like you to know the unit vectors in cylindrical and spherical coordinate system. AR, AFI, AZ are the unit vectors in cylindrical coordinate system. AR, A theta, AFI are the unit vectors representations in spherical coordinate system. 
Apart from this, from examination point of view, you are expected to know the expression for DL bar. DL bar is an infinitesimal current element length. It's a very small length. Very small length is represented as a vector in the three coordinate systems. So, for the case of Cartesian coordinate system, DL bar is represented as dx ax plus dy ay plus dz az. For the case of cylindrical coordinate system, DL bar is represented as dr ar plus r d phi a phi plus dz az. And in spherical coordinate system, DL bar is represented as dr ar plus r d theta a theta plus r sin theta d phi r sin theta d phi a phi so this is how you represent a vector dl bar in three coordinate systems so in in a separate class for electrical students where i discuss inductance and capacitance calculations i would give you the expressions for ds and dv but in this combined class, DL bar expression would be sufficient. We will use the expression of DL bar in electrostatics and microstatics as well as in electromagnetic waves and antennas. So, I would expect you to be good at using this DL bar equation in any of these three coordinate systems. Okay. Now, the next topic would be scalar fields and vector fields what do you understand when i say scalar field first of all what do you understand when i say field field is a region in space where the effect of some quantity is felt so a region can be a classroom a region can can be free space a region can be a theater so any region where the effect of some quantity is felt can be considered as a field and this is scalar field scalar should tell you that we are interested only in the magnitude so it is a field in which at each and every point in this field we are interested only in the magnitude of the quantity we are not interested in the direction direction of the quantity at that particular point in the field or at any point in the field what is the classic example for scalar field classic example for scalar field is the temperature distribution in a room temperature distribution in a room can be considered as a classic example if i ask you to measure the temperature at various points in a room then how do you do how do you find out the temperature possibly say you take the thermometer and then you measure at the, uh, the temperature at each and every point just for example and then you you come up with lot of values right and if i ask you what is the temperature at 1 comma 1 comma 1 what would be your answer you would say based on the results that you got you would say it as either 18 degrees centigrade or 20 degrees centigrade or 25 degrees centigrade right or would you uh, uh, would you give the answer as 18 degrees centigrade northeast or 20 degrees 20 degrees centigrade southwest no because with this quantity for this quantity we are not interested in the direction we are interested only in the magnitude at each and every point in the field that's the reason we are, we are considering this as a classic example. Now, given a field, how do you find out whether it is a scalar field or a vector field? Like I told you, we will always discuss both physical interpretation and mathematical interpretation. So, first we will take the physical interpretation, that is we will understand the concept and then immediately we will switch on to the mathematical models. We try to understand the concept by by 
considering a mathematical model associated with it. So when I see a scalar field F, so what would be the expression for this field in general? So a scalar field or scalar function, scalar function denotes the mathematical model associated with this field. Both of them are same. These two terms are used interchangeably. Sometimes we call it a scalar field, sometimes we call it a scalar function or sometimes we refer it to as just a scalar. So what we need to understand is whether we call it a scalar field or a scalar function or just a scalar. All of them have the same properties and these properties are similar to the properties of a scalar quantity. So a scalar function will have a form similar to this f of x, y, z is equal to x square plus y square plus z square. Going by the example that we that I uh, gave you just now, if I if I ask you to find out the temperature distribution in a room, when you when you have several values that are obtained by conducting the experiment, possibly one uh, next level would be you you come up with an equation that that corresponds to the values that you got based on the experiment, and then you say that the temperature distribution in the room can be something like x square plus y square plus z square degrees centigrade. If you come out with such kind, such kind of equation and then I ask you, okay, what is the temperature at 2 comma 3 comma 4, then you substitute 2 comma 3 comma 4 in this and you give me the answer. So what it means is whenever if a function is known and you want to find out whether it is a scalar function or a vector function or whether this function is associated with a scalar field or a vector field, just substitute a point 1 comma 2 comma 3 and then see what is the value you get. If you get the value as a pure scalar is just a number then this function is a scalar function or this is associated with a scalar field. On the other hand we also discuss one more field called vector field. So what do you understand by vector field? Field is again a region in space where the effect of some quantity is felt. Vector field. It is a field in which at each and every point in the field we not only bother about the magnitude, we also bother about the direction of the quantity at that point in the field. And what would be the, what would be the classic example for this field? The force experienced by a charged particle placed in electric field is an example of a vector field. So we know that force is a vector quantity. So when, when, when a charge is placed in the vicinity of one more charge, depending on the polarity of the charges, there will be an attractive force or a repulsive force. So when these charges attract, means when they get together, it's, it's attractive force. When the charges move away from each other, it becomes a repulsive force. So whether it is towards the towards e each other or away from each other indicates that direction uh, di direction is significant. When the direction becomes significant, then this type of quantity is referred to as a, a vector quantity or this kind of field in which uh, dire direction is important is referred to as a vector field. And if you mathematically represent this vector field by a function, this becomes a vector function. And a vector function looks something like this. A bar of x, y, z is equal to x square x cap plus y square y cap plus z square z cap. So if I consider the same example, force, if I say force, is represented as a vector x square x cap plus y, x y square y cap plus z square z cap and if I ask you to find out the force experienced by a charge at 1 comma 2 comma 3 then you substitute it in this equation you get a vector and we know force is a vector quantity so that will have both magnitude and direction at that, po at that particular point in the field. So the fields are broadly classified into two types scalar field or a vector field. So whatever field we study in the field theory course will belong to one of these two categories. So it has to be it has to be either a scalar field or a vector field.